I'm Rod Gilbert, stand-up comedian, and this is my work experience. This week, I'm a classical musician. I was mad keen to start fiddling, fingering, blowing and banging things, so I waltzed on down to meet the BBC National Orchestra of Wales in Cardiff. I'm no expert, but I've got a feeling to be in an orchestra. You need to be what I would call a musician. You need to know what you're doing, and I don't want to go too much into it, but I don't. My new boss was head of the orchestra, Michael Garvey, and I was keen to hear how little he had planned for me. Let me tell you a bit about the orchestra first, though. Yes. A bunch of musicians that are, without a doubt, the best in the country. One, two. So good, international audiences want to hear them. <laughs> that is the world you're about to walk into. Yeah. This week, we're going to be preparing for the world's highest profile, most prestigious classical music festival. Right. No problemo, Michael. I'll just slot into your world-class orchestra for the BBC's iconic Last Night of the Proms. It'll be a walk in the park, Singleton Park, Swansea. And if you're going to play alongside them, you're going to have to be as good as them. I'm terrified. Don't be terrified. Yeah, thinking about it, Michael was right. I had nothing to fear. A kid on our street had a whistle when I was growing up, so this was going to be a piece of piss. All I had to do was pick an instrument. Well, we'll start with open strings. OK. Mm -hmm. First audition, something called a violin, with someone called Gwen. Good. Now we should maybe add the fingers. Pretty soon, my innate musicality was flowing through the violin with ethereal beauty. I'll just sing the rest. Does this not play the rest then, are we? Well, I mean. <laughs> was it so painful? That you... <laughs> my haunting three blind mice was clearly affecting Gwen deeply. I knew I was prom ready and looked to Gwen to rubber stamp my appointment. Do I have any natural ability with this instrument? Yeah, I'd say so. Do you? Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Gwen was desperate for me to join her in the violins, but I felt something bigger and better would unlock my full potential. Double bass, yeah. This is yours, is this it? This is mine. Give it a pluck with this hand that opens strings. Now that is an E. Within seconds, I was playing musical techniques that regular double bassist David could only dream of. So you've done pizzicato, yeah? Pizzicato. Yeah, that's it. With this, it's arco, with the bow. This pizzicato is sort of fingers, no bow, yeah. arco with a bow. Yeah, yeah. As David showed me round his swollen violin, I noticed a design fault. It had been made for people with rakes instead of hands. The gap there needs to be a lot bigger yeah. for that. Yeah. Oh. Come a bit further around. Oh, that's my it. God. <laughs> and then fourth finger is F, and I put these two down. It's so difficult to get your hand, manipulate your hands into these positions. I mean, you won't be there on the night to do relax, this. Relax, oh. relax, relax, relax this. Let me move you. <laughs> Off camera, David practically begged me to join his section at the proms, but his instrument was basically just a big shit cupboard with strings. So I moved on to state-of-the-art shiny metal things. So your first tuba, are you? Correct. So that means you lead the tubas. There's usually only one. Oh. <laughs> I might be jumping ahead of myself here, but it doesn't sound like there's much room for me in the tuba section. To bar or not to bar? That was the question. With only one first tuba spot available at the proms, it was a straight honk off between me and Dan. I showed him my moves. <laughs> <laughs> Try and aim the air a bit lower. Let me get the note first and I'll run yeah, onto it. Yeah, yeah, that's the way. <laughs> I'd set the bar high, and Dan looked like a tuba player who knew his P45 was in the post. <laughs> spent. <laughs> I'm spent. <laughs> I was spoilt for choice, but with the proms just a few days away, I had to find an instrument that could really challenge me musically. Sarah Jane, I have to slot into this orchestra somewhere. Is it going to be here? Next up, woodwind, and the cor anglais, or English horn, offers a varied and diverse sound and Sarah Jane was keen for me to play her favourite piece. Basically, you play the same note about 60 times. OK. So if we can get you to make a sound, you could actually play from there to there for me. Wow. 
All I had to do was force one note out without following through, and I'd be an instant one-note wonder. So Sarah Jane showed me what her horn could do. Like Psycho. Stronger. Ta -ta. Uh, yeah, fifty nine to go. Fifty nine <laughs> to go. Oh my god. Excelling everywhere I went, I had the pick of the orchestra to choose from, but none of the instruments had really spoken to me spiritually. I decided to watch the orchestra rehearse to see which section was weakest and would benefit most from my help. This close to an orchestra like this is phenomenal. Pretty awe-inspiring experience. I feel like David Attenborough. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm musically dead from the hair down. Unless one of these elite musicians wanted me to feed their cat while they were at the proms, there was no place for me. Or was there? Hiding right up the back, one bloke was practically asleep. While the rest of the orchestra had worked their fingers and mouths to the bone, Chris was the orchestral equivalent of a belly button. He'd been there all right, but he hadn't done much. With his help, maybe I could join this orchestra after all. A lot of the time, you were sat around doing nothing, and I thought, <laughs> that looks like me, that looks you like my place. Perfect. Yeah. I was confident I had what it took to do nothing, but Mr Bellybutton still had to check I was redundant enough. So what do you actually recognise on there? Right. We might have to move on. <laughs> <laughs> a good start, but Mr Bellybutton showed me around a whole load of other things I'd have to master not playing. Between us, we quickly narrowed down all the options I didn't have in the first place. Do you play sport? Uh, no. OK. Maybe we need to move on to the snare drum. Snare drum roll. You're away. Now then, I don't understand how you get them to go so fast in yet. Well, it's a... That's pretty close. It's a misconcept. They're not going very fast. If you look at a snare drum roll, actually it's quite slow. Right. It's made up of that and that. So my hands are only going... So you're not actually drumming that fast, you're just letting really it really land fast. and reverberate? This just got better and better. An instrument people think you're playing when you're not. Another one. And then that one. And then that one. Gradually go faster. Keep letting them bounce. A little bit faster. A little bit faster. A little bit faster. And don't go any faster than that. It was all falling into place. This self playing drum meant I could switch off completely and let physics do its stuff. So that's a possible. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely a possible. Okay. That's possibly a definite. But before I got too carried away, Mr Bellybutton wanted me to be aware of the drawbacks of doing very little. When we do actually play, the audience tend to notice you're about to do something. Because you've sat there for ages and suddenly you move. There is absolutely no hiding in our department. So as soon as you stand up, it's like... he's yeah. going to do something. It's like, he's woken up. I'd officially joined Mr Bellybutton's totally redundant percussion team. Next day, we rocked up at Merthyr Tidville Leisure Centre, my do-nothing gang and cleverly chosen green sweatshirts to blend in with Leisure Centre staff, so nobody would confuse us with the orchestra. So we've got a slightly different event today called a relaxed concert, not your standard concert. It's more accessible to anybody. So it's a very different atmosphere. Very different. It sounds ideal for me to step it into. It is. It's quite a comfortable environment to play in. We're I'm quite nervous, I have to yeah. say. <laughs> Just in case people started asking awkward questions, Mr Bellybutton gave me a broken tambourine to hold. Um, it's a half-moon tambourine, it's like a rock tambourine, and you're basically going to shake it level with the floor. Try and keep in time with the music. OK. Do you think I'll ever graduate to a whole tambourine? Possibly. <laughs> Hello, cheers. Mr Bellybutton rode out with a posse of like-minded layabouts who knew exactly what not to do. How are you doing, sir? 
OK. But as the relaxed concert started up, I needlessly panicked. What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> well, I'm just going to stand and watch this one. Are we? Not until the very end. Your number. So you've got ages. Why well, so don't you do anything? Can, no, you can... Oh. You can Song after song went by, but Mr Bellybutton and the do-nothings styled it out, doing less work than a dead sloth in a shoebox. Even the audience was doing more than us. This is great, just sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> That's the way forward. <laughs> Suddenly, things took a very ugly turn. As Mr Bellybutton played the Oh shit, it's time to do something alarm, I knew this wasn't a drill. The do-nothings were going to have to do something. Right, in this one, Rod, I'm going to give you these to play. Um, a pair of little tiny school maracas. Play at the same time as Christina. Um, I'm just taking them like that. Is that That's fine. Whatever you like. Just do the same as she's going to do. We've got different instruments. How am I going to do the same as you? Basically, the same <laughs> idea. In an instant, the whole mood had changed. And as the do-nothings all leapt about doing things, I've never felt so let down in my life. Oh, I'm going wrong. Oh. Hang on. I'm off the I'm off the beat. Even though mine was the worst orchestral manoeuvre since Beethoven accidentally put his bassoon in Mozart's piccolo case, I was starting to enjoy it. I was getting the knack of the goat knackers maracas when Belly switched me to a glasses case. Uh, that's a bit more advanced, that now. <laughs> People at home will be going, that's so easy. It's not that easy. Oh, little do they know. It's not. Tell them, tell them. It's not easy. Nerve wracking. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm like, let's go. Welcome to the orchestra. That was the simplest of things to do. And that's in a relaxed performance. So Christ knows what it's going to be like in a stressed performance. Next day, I was summoned to Orchestra HQ to meet Belly Button's mate, Steve, to discuss the proms. As long as I'd be playing that happy, clappy shit on the goat snackers, maracas or glasses case, I'd be fine. But there was some bad news. The piece that we've decided that you're going to play is, uh, it's a really oh, yeah. famous piece. You're probably going to know it. It's from 2001 Space Odyssey. Remember that? Yeah. It starts with yeah. a bit of a rumble. Um, and then you get, exactly, you get the brass come in, and then you get the timpani. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. But and it's that, totally solo, and you've got the ability to either make or wreck a concert. Right. Simple. Yeah, simple. <laughs> Steve demonstrated the simple piece I'd be playing to thousands live on TV on an instrument I couldn't even spell. And then the second time, it's a bit different. OK, so that's the one totally where you Totally different. Can you can take a bit, it's a bit different, you can take a bit more time. You can take as much time as you want, um, because the conductor will basically have to wait for you to play your 12 notes, and then on the 13th, the conductor's going to bring the rest of the orchestra in. You're in charge. You dictate when the orchestra come in. That's the power you've got as a timpanist. I don't feel like a timpanist yet. I'll level with it. No. <laughs> you could fit everything I know about timpani on Mrs Mangle's triangle, but at least it didn't matter where I hit timps. It matters where you hit Tim's. So we're striking the drum about there. So its optimum striking position is about four inches in. So if I hit it like this... That's too far in. It's be there. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was. Take it from me. That's too close to the edge. About there. That's perfect. I shouldn't have given you all this bit, really. Not really. Just <laughs> given you that bit. The skin on the Tim was stretched as tight as a drum, cos it was a drum, so there was no room for error. That's it. 
That's what we call a rim shot. That was a rim shot. You know, drummer Buddy Rich, you've heard of jazz yeah. drummers? They do rim shots on purpose. Yeah, but I did that on, on purpose. That on was a tint. tribute to Buddy Rich. There we are. R.I.P. It's his birthday next week, I think. So that's, oh, was that's, it? Oh, I thought he passed good. away. Not R.I.P. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, he's passed away. No, he has passed away. But oh, is he? It oh, R.I.P. OK. For the next hour, I looked at Steve while he went yomp pom pom and clicked his fingers and stuff. ba bum two. And the roll. Yeah, da 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 bum 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 yum bum 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 There's 13 of them, is there? How many of those little billums are there at the top? You don't count those, you just play... The more Steve clicked his fingers and went yap da da yum bum bum Each group of three notes is one beat. The more complicated this stuff got. The higher the note, the easier it speaks. And the more stressed I got about the stress performance. Bum 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 Like you're gonna hit someone. I hadn't mastered the yum bum 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 and I still had all the bada 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 to go. Now try doing the roll. Yeah. There's no control, there's no consistency to it. It's just chaos. I couldn't understand it. I was stressed to shit, but the stress performance bada 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 still wasn't happening for me. But Steve had spotted that my Brahms were just too tense. At the moment, you're tense everywhere. I'm very tense everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So you just... Stress. Just got to relax. It's the stress performance. <laughs> the more you can relax, the better, because you're allowing the sticks and the drums to do the work. My confusion was starting to crescendo, as if relaxing in the relaxed concert wasn't stressful enough. Now I was too stressed for the stressed concert and had to relax. If it all goes horribly wrong, is there, is there any little tricks or things to...? No. I'm definitely feeling the stress now. This is really hard. I am 100% confident I can do a really, really shit version. Less than 1% confident that I can get it bang on. Stumble over the triplet. Everything I'm doing at the moment is slightly wrong. But I'm pretty damn pleased, because if you told me that within such a short space of time I'd only be doing everything slightly wrong, I'd be pretty chuffed with that. With the proms just a day away, I was struggling with my rising Strauss levels. If I gave up now, I'd look like a complete and utter Wagner. What the Elgar was I going to do? The orchestra and proms conductor Gavin had arrived for rehearsal. There was no turning bar. This is our one day of rehearsal where we have to put the whole concert together for six hours to get it perfect and then go and do it in front of the cameras and however many million people tomorrow. Cool. Six hours of intense rehearsal. I could practice my 90-second bit non-stop 240 times. I'd even have time for a Prokofiev break. Dual feature for about... 20 minutes? 20 minutes for a piece that lasts a minute and a half. Yeah. Oh, great. The world-class orchestra gets six hours practice, but a timpanist of my experience only needs 20 minutes, apparently. Ladies and gentlemen, a very, very big welcome for our guest timpanist, Mr Rod Gilbert. What, what, do, you, what do you do, Steve? Do you, uh... <laughs> so no pressure, Rod? No, I'm not feeling it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Stick your arms through there. This rehearsal was all I had. My heart was bub -bub 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 in my chest, and my ass was hitting rim shots like a coked up Buddy Rich. All right, Shh. a little bit on the early side. A bit on the early side. A fraction later. Pick up. I knew I wasn't doing well, but Gavin's face was a picture that told a thousand words, and at least nine of those words were twat. As late as you dare. with Steve operating me from behind and Gavin trying to remote control me from the front, my timing was off.
My yum pom poms were all coming out, but 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 and vice versa. Put your faith in this, all right? <laughs> Oh my God! You're gonna have to watch him and not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Oh my God! I think I'm hyperventilating. I really wish I could practice again because I think if I just had a few more hours, I could start to get it right. Unfortunately, I haven't got that time. Shit. This is a toilet. Feeling totally unprepared, I'd Beethoven down to Swansea Singleton Park for the last night of the proms. If it goes badly, it could be the last ever night of the proms. In a couple of hours, thousands of music addicts seeking their next symphonic fix would transform this innocent-looking field into a middle-class mosh pit. So this will hopefully be, well, even. I say hopefully. They say two and a half thousand, but the walk-ups are usually up to about double that, so it could be four or five thousand. All good. As the crowds poured in, I was really feeling the pressure. I wasn't sure I was Rachman enough to pull this off. There's a lot of people to let down. Let down the thousands of music lovers, let down Gavin the conductor, the 80 odd world class musicians, and let down Strauss the composer. Or oh, less worried about him, he's dead. But Backstage, I had to take every opportunity I could to practice. With 80 world class musicians and Misha, world class bloody Paris, selfishly sound checking on stage, I could barely hear my plastic spoons and bin lid. It's really hard trying to get my beat with her banging on out there. As the stress performance grew nearer, I could barely cope with the pressure. I'm going with their beat now. I kept telling myself to relax. But with the orchestra in full swing, I couldn't hear a word I was saying, and my nerves were bringing out the worst in me. This is supposed to be my day, it's my big debut on the drums, and Misha Bloody Paris is out there hogging the stage, and I can't get any practice time in. Misha Bloody Paris, anybody can give themselves a surname like Paris. I can call myself Rod Crummich. <laughs> right, get off, Misha. Have a goodie, boo boo. See you in a minute. Thanks. <laughs> I was starting to think I'd Benjamin Britten off more than I could chew, but it was time to get ready. Have you got any um, anti-stress powder? <gasps> You'd be fine, I'm sure. Well, if you're sure, it should be all right. Yeah. I was so on edge, every fibre of my being wanted to go back to doing nothing. Oh, this is horrific. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I've got cold feet. Of Rod. Oh, Christ, don't do that. <laughs> As the moment of truth drew near, I prayed for divine intervention. Please, God, I know you've been more than generous rain-wise in Wales over the years, but if you could just dig deep and get this gig rained off. Hallelujah! Hoo-hoo! Thank you, Wales. <laughs> Bollocks. My reign had arrived right on cue, but the crowd didn't give a Shostakovich. Clearly, the Chopin must go on. With no way out, I was under so much pressure, my brain switched to a black and white montage to emphasise my anxiety. The tin part actually is the most important bit. Yes, I know that, Chris. So there's a lot of people wanting to hear the very best performance. Yes, I bloody realise that, Michael. You've got the ability to either make or wreck a concert. All right, Steve, I get it, all right? Now, we have a surprise special guest for you, Nettie. Yes. To say he's waiting nervously in the wings. Not to do it myself, I'm so nervous. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Wait for it, as it comes. 
please welcome Mr. Rod Gilbert. Hey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, performing Also Sprach Zarathustra, the BBC National Orchestra of Wales featuring Rod Gilbert. I'd blown it. Woe is me. The music fans who'd come to see 2001 Space Odyssey had only seen some clown called me perform an act of infamy and fail to play the timpani. I'm terrified. Don't be terrified. Pressure gives results, yeah? They must have experienced that before. Yeah. You'll feel it. You will feel it. Trust me. I'm yeah. sure you'll feel it. You're nervous right up till there. And from that point on, it's just got to happen. Take two. Absolutely exhilarating. Privilege and an honour to play with a national orchestra like that. World class. An incredible thing. There's nothing like it. Just being involved really makes me think I wish I'd picked up an instrument and stuck with it all my life, really. It's been such fun. It's as close as I got to proper magic. I'm not talking about magic magic. That was proper magic. 